Uh, Samuel Proctor, good to see you there. So I have a question on the name cathartic motivational. Why have the descriptor motivational after? Why not just cathartic? The character one would one would assume aspirational is also. That's a really good question, Samuel. I'm so glad you asked that. And there's a very specific reason. I chose that terminology very carefully, and I'm glad you gave me a chance to uh, explain that. And yeah, a lot of my students too, well, they'll just kind of shorthand it cathartic, cathartic characters like, no, 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 no. A cathartic character is like Hamlet. A cathartic character is there to show you what not to do, uh, to show you the ways, you know, you, you, you know, real catharsis, especially like in Greek terms and tragedy and whatnot, is you see the, the uh, imbalance of emotions in a character or the imbalance of, uh, you know, their imbalance of values, their, imba their, their, their hubris, you know, you see something like that in a character and you're supposed to go ahead and experience that with the character experience those emotions and it's it's a, it's a purgative factor it purges you of carrying those emotions in an unbalanced way by seeing that character do it so you can watch a really great rendition of hamlet and you can feel really sorry for hamlet his, his father was killed by his uncle his uncle marries his mother but the ghost of his father appears to him and tells him this happened and it's up to you my son as the prince of the you know you are the one to, to rectify this and you can empathize with with uh, Hamlet and say, yeah, that would be hard, though. I mean, a ghost told you this. You can imagine all the ways you'd second guess that. But it becomes so evident throughout the movie that Hamlet knows he has to do this thing. He knows he's been called to do a task, to do a heroic task, to save the kingdom, to save his family, to save his mother, you know, to right the wrong. And he refuses to do it. He lets his self-doubt get in the way. He constantly um, and because he second guesses himself at every point. More and more people die as that play goes on. Until the end of the play, the entire stage is just littered with corpses, including his own. He dies at the end. Spoiler for Hamlet, but you should know Hamlet. Um, like everybody just pretty much dies at the end of that uh, play, all because he didn't get off his butt and be a hero and do the thing that he knew he needed to do. He second guessed himself. He self doubted. He was sad. He was whiny. He was mopey. And I use this example for Man of Steel. Man of Steel's problem was not that it made Superman cathartic motivational. It didn't even make him cathartic motivational. It made him straight up cathartic. You know, Superman really was Hamlet. You know, I call him emo Hamlet in that movie. You know, it was, it was that's why it was an insanely wrong take on, on Superman. Because, you know, as we mentioned before on one of my last streams, you know, it, they use sympathy alone to try and get you to engage with a character. And think about all the people that die and all the people that are constantly in danger because he just doesn't step up. He's like, oh, but I don't know. My dad said I shouldn't be a hero. And I don't know. You know, it's just, it's, ah, shut up. You're a hero. So cathartic motivational then is somebody like Spider-Man, my perfect example. But there are others too, but he's just the perfect example because Spider-Man screws up and Spider-Man got those powers and didn't automatically decide that he needed to be a hero, that he needed to be selfless with those powers. You know, he has that moment when he gets those powers that he thinks, you know what? Screw this. I'm tired of getting a, a, a raw hand in life. You know, I've got all these things that happen. So I'm going to use these powers to, to get some money, whether it's for Aunt May or to get a cool car or whatever, however the, the specific story depicts it. Uh, and he has to learn. He has to learn, you know, when, when, um, when Uncle Ben, you know, dies and he could have stopped it or whatever. He could have stopped the guy that did it. You know, he has to learn. And he doesn't go around moping and saying, oh, woe is me. My uncle's dead because of me. Oh, I shouldn't. No, no, I'm not worthy of being a hero. You know, that's just stupid catharsis taken to the uh, to the nth degree. But he's motivational because you get a little bit of that catharsis and then he dusts himself up, picks himself off the ground gets off his butt and becomes a hero does heroism and and he's a great example of that because good spider-man stories will still have him continuously you know mess up here or there or um are fall into some self-doubt sure but he never lets it uh impede his heroism and that's the motivational part that i talk about so i'm really glad you asked that question because it's a great way to to um you know oh so you said it still have just plain aspirational and no motivational description yeah aspirational See, and that's the difference, right? Aspirational is not just motivational. Yes, aspirational characters do motivate you to be better, but you need to do more than be motivated by an aspirational hero. You need to aspire to be like them. Totally different, totally new thing, you know? So, um, you know, it's just that up to the nth degree, you know? So you can, you can be motivated by cathartic motivational heroes, but you want to aspire to be just like. 
And you might think, oh, well, that's semantics because somebody might want to aspire to be like Spider-Man. Sure, but you don't want to aspire to make the same mistakes that Spider-Man made. You might want to aspire to be the kind of person that can, you know, pick yourself up off the ground, dust yourself off and do better after your mistakes. But you don't want to aspire to be just like him and making his mistakes, too. Right. Even though it's unrealistic, the aspirational ideal is somebody that in a perfect world, you you would want to be totally like he man. You would want to be totally like Steve Rogers. Uh, you know, you can't. But that's the standard that you want to strive for anyway. But really glad you asked that question. That's such a distinction that needs to be made again and again every so often. I find with my channel a lot, you know, I, I in my scholarship a lot, too, in my classes that I teach as well. You know, I I did this scholarship and, you know, I've written about it and we've, you know, I've taught it and we move on. And we keep using these terms. But, you know, I forget that people jump on board at all these different uh, uh stages along the journey so they don't necessarily know about the, the origins or the stages of an origins character of power empowerment called action and so forth you know they they need to um it's good to go back and give some some rudimentary definitions every now and then 